Hey, I'm Ben from Universal Audio, and today I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks for using the UAD Lexicon 480L Digital Reverb and Effects Plugin. So at its heart, the 480L is a multi-effects processor that became famous for its reverb and effects algorithms. Now the hardware was this huge 3U mainframe looking thing that would sit back in the machine room. And then out in the control room would be this pocket calculator looking thing that would control all the banks, programs, and parameters for the reverb unit. So at first glance, it looks a little confusing, a little overwhelming, but trust me, after you spend 30 minutes playing with this reverb, you're gonna find not only sounds that you love, but just how easy it is to control and tweak the reverb. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So now before we dive in, let me give you just a quick overview of the controls for the 480. Now you'll notice at the bottom, there's a row of buttons. Now these control the bank, the program, and the page. Now the bank is plates, halls, rooms, ambience, effects. This is controlling which set of algorithms you're using. Now inside of each bank, there's multiple programs. And these are basically presets or kind of starting points for different algorithms. So inside a plate, you'll find multiple plates with different settings and lengths and tones. And this is a good place to start from. And then finally, you have the page controls. Now what the page does is it controls which parameters are mapped to the faders right above this row of buttons. So as you go through the pages of the controls, you'll see the display right above it is changing each time. And now the faders are controlling a different part of each algorithm. So for instance, right now, the first fader is controlling my reverb time. And you can tell that by either decrypting RTM or looking up a little bit higher and on the top display screen, you'll see that it's now saying reverb time. If I click on this fourth fader, I'm now controlling the size. These controls make it really easy to quickly customize and tailor and shape the sound of your reverb or effects. And so above the faders are another set of buttons. Here you'll see mute, the meter options, display hold, the wet dry mix and wet solo buttons, and the overall power button. And above that, you'll find the AB buttons, which allow you to switch between two different presets all inside of one plugin. And next to the AB buttons, you'll notice there's a bank of numbers. So these were super useful on the hardware for quickly accessing banks and programs. But in the plugin version, it's actually just a secret drawer for the input and output gain controls. And finally, at the top, you'll find the main display. So here's where you can see what bank you're on, what program you're currently using, and whatever parameter you're currently editing, as well as having an input meter for being able to judge your gain stage into the plugin. So now for this first example, I've got an electric guitar part that was recorded in using an amp simulator with just a little bit of delay on it, but the sound is just kind of flat and very 2D at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the 480L with some room or an ambience program, and just to add some space, some dimension, build some walls around this guitar amp. Let's check it out. Here's the guitar dry. Now let's hear what it sounds like with electric guitar inside of a room. So first I'm gonna use the bank button to get to the room bank. And then I'm just gonna listen back and scroll through the different programs until I find something that tickles my ear. So as you heard, when I was scrolling through the different programs, there's all sorts of different sizes and lengths and colors of reverb just inside the room bank. So my favorite one was this medium room sound. Now let's adjust some of these parameters to really tailor the sound. The first control I'm gonna reach for is the size. This affects the reverb time, the sound and the shape of the room. It's kind of the first place to look for if you wanna make your reverb longer, smaller, bigger, fatter, the size. It's the fourth fader right here. I'm gonna tweak that up and down. You can kind of hear the effect that this has on the sound. So as you heard, as I increased the size control, the reverb time got longer and the overall sense of the space got bigger. Makes sense, right? 
So for this guitar part, I want it to feel like it's in a room that's pretty intimate and just interesting. So I brought that size back down to 13 meters, and now I'm going to tweak the reverb time, the shape, and the spread controls, which all have an effect on the color and the vibe of the reverb. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So as you heard, the shape and spread controls give a different color and a different depth to the sound, and the reverb time just adds more tail to the reverb. All very powerful controls for really customizing and tailoring a space around a sound. So what are these other faders for? Well, the one on the very right is the pre-delay, which gives you that sense of separation between your original source and the reverb or the room that it exists in. And to the left of that is the high frequency cutoff. And what this does is it tames the high end of the reverb, just makes it a little bit smoother sounding, a little less artificial, you could say, up in the top end. Let's hear what those sound like. So you can hear the pre-delay separates the guitar from the reverb effect, which just gives you this bigger sense of space without having to add more reverb time. And then the high frequency cutoff just kind of chills it out a little bit and makes it a little bit less obvious that this reverb is there in the mix. So that's all the effect parameters on page one. Now there's page two, three, and four, and that's really if you want to dive deeper and get really tweaky about some of the settings, you know, like the diffusion, the bass crossover. But honestly, the best way to use this plugin is to find the bank of programs that you like for a particular sound, scroll through the programs until something catches your ear, adjust from there, and then move on and keep mixing. So in that spirit, let's move on and continue mixing. So now I've sold up my lead vocal track. Now, typically, I'll start off with a little bit of room, maybe some plate and delay, you know, stuff to give it a sense of dimension, but also give it a little bit of a cloud to sit on inside the mix. So I'm going to start by sending this vocal to the same room that we just set up for on the guitar. Let's see what that sounds like. Wasted time I don't have to spare And here's that phrase with no reverb. Wasted time I don't have to spare So you can hear that made a huge difference right away. We go from this completely dry vocal to still a pretty dry vocal, but with a sense of space around it, which is what we were going for. So now I'm going to fill that space in even more using like a plate or a hall reverb. So again, I'm going to pull up the 480 plugin and hit the bank button until I get to the plates. And then I'm going to press play, send a bunch of this vocal into the plate, and switch between programs until I find something that I want to tweak on. Wasted time I don't have to spare Wasted time, I don't have to spare, but I'll be fine. So as I'm scrolling through those programs, I'm really just looking for a starting point, something that catches my ear and makes me excited about that sound, which in these plates, for me, that was that small plate. Let's hear what that one sounds like again, before and after. Wasted time. I don't have to spare. That's the kind of plate sound that the 480 is famous for. Really lush, really rich, shiny, but you know, not cluttering up the mix. I love that plate sound. But what I also love about the 480, especially on vocals, are some of the effects programs. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So now I've sold up a background vocal part. I just want to show you some of the crazy effects that are also built into the 480. So I'm going to hit the bank button until we're over to the effects bank. And then as we listen back, I'm just going to cycle through the programs until we find something that's interesting.
So as you can hear, some of those effects are wild. They go all the way from just like a doubler effect to this weird reversing, just granular. It's, it's pretty crazy, and that's just scratching the surface of what the 480 can do. So instead of spending days going down this rabbit hole, I want to show you one last thing that the 480 is famous for, and that's its random algorithm. Now you'll notice there's two banks, one called random halls and one called random spaces. And these are very similar to the regular reverb algorithm, except that it's injecting little bits of randomness to the algorithm. And what that results in is a little bit denser, a little bit smoother of a reverb sound, and it's honestly what the 480 is famous for. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I've soloed up a synth track, I'm sending it to the same effects send, and now instead of using the bank and program buttons at the bottom, what I can actually do, because this is a plugin, is I can go up to the display, click on effects, and look at that, I can select my bank directly instead of having to scroll through them. So let's go to random halls, and I'm going to still use the program button because it's the easiest way to scroll through the different effects settings. So you can instantly get a sense of that density in the space and just the size and weight of that reverb, which, you know, for a synth like this, creating that big dark cloud around it is kind of the perfect sound. Let's hear what it sounds like before and after adding this random hall effect. Yeah, so again, you can just hear the difference that this random hall is making in adding size and weight and just giving this huge sense of space around the synth, which in this case I think sounds awesome. So that's an overview of the UAD Lexicon 480 Digital Reverb and Effects plugin. Now as you saw, this plugin's all about scrolling through programs and finding something that inspires you and adds life and color and spice to your mixes. And something I didn't even touch on are the incredible artist presets that are included with this plugin. So if you already own a UAD hardware or UA audio interface, you can actually demo this plugin right now for 14 days for free, and I highly suggest you try it out and get weird with it. All right, I'll see you next time.